Hello and welcome to the I, your English News Bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma said on Tuesday that clashes at its border with Mizoram was not a political issue but a long-standing dispute between the two states. COVID vaccines for children are likely to be in a matter of days, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was told this morning at a meeting of BJP MPs at Parliament. The London High Court declared fugitive Indian businessman Vijay Malia bankrupt on July 26 in a major victory for Indian banks, allowing them to pursue recovery. Now for the news in details. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma said on Tuesday that clashes at its border with Mizoram was not a political issue but a long-standing dispute between the two states. The Chief Minister of Assam said that this is a boundary dispute between the two states. This is a long-standing border dispute, he said. There was a dispute even at the time when the Congress government was there on both sides. This is a dispute between two states, he informed. Sarma added that the three battalions of commandos would be deployed in Kachar, Karim Granj and Halaikandi, districts bordering Mizoram to quell violence. The move followed after six Assam police personnel were killed and 50 others injured during clashes at the border between Assam's Kachar and Mizoram's Vairangte on Monday. Visuals that surfaced on social media showed civilians on both sides of the border pelting stones at each other and attacking security personnel with sticks and rods. Sarma further stated that he ordered a probe into the incident and find where civilians procured arms and ammunition from. The chief minister also visited Silchar Medical College and Hospital to meet the injured state police personnel. The District Task Force on COVID-19 of Mokokchong organized a sensitization program on COVID-19 vaccination for unvaccinated government employees of various offices in Mokokchong District Headquarters at the Town Hall on July 27th. Delivering the keynote address, Deputy Commissioner Lima Wabang Jamir said that the objective in organizing the program was not to force anybody to get vaccinated, but to have interactions so as to clear doubts of the people about vaccination. A medical official, Dr. Younger, who was a resource person, gave a detailed explanation on the importance and advantages of getting vaccinated. He said the only solution to combating a potential third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic is to get every eligible individual vaccinated. Maintaining that vaccines are proving to be efficient against hospitalization and death, he said the most COVID-19 deaths in the district were of those who were unvaccinated. After the program, 26 people were reportedly vaccinated. Two thieves made a failed attempt to drag out the ATM from the SBI ATM booth located near Gate 1 of the Police Training Center PTC in Bander Dewa in the wee hours of Monday. In video footage from the ATM booth, two masked men are seen entering the ATM at about 2.17 a.m. and breaking into the back room of the booth. The lights of the ATM go out soon, but the night vision mode captures their movement and shows that they are damaging and fiddling with the ATM. Bandar Dewa Police Station OC Tadu Hasang informed that the police were alerted by the SBI ATM staff in Hyderabad at around 2.35 a.m. about the security breach in the ATM near Gate 1 of the PTC. A team headed by ASI J. Tam with Head Constable S.K. Jha and others rushed to the spot but could not find anyone there. The team was alerted and sent to the location but they did not find anyone at the spot, the OC said. The miscreants attempted to drag out the ATM with a rope probably tied to a vehicle outside but the vehicle is not visible in the CCTV footage, the officer said. The ATM locker was also found open and damaged while the police suspect that the miscreants must have fled the scene on hearing the police siren. A petty amount might have been stolen from the reject bin of the ATM, the OC said. The ATM was dragged out of the booth, causing damage to the property, the official said, and a huge amount of money was saved due to the quick response of the CCTV monitoring team and the police, the OC said. The matter is under investigation. 
Despite the scare of COVID-19 and a restrained homecoming for Olympic silver medalist Mirabai Chanu in Imphal, Manipur's Chief Minister N. Biren Singh personally came to the Bir Tikendrajit International Airport and escorted the state's newest sporting icon in his own vehicle to the city convention in Imphal East District where a grand state function was organized by the state's government. Thousands of people gathered at the Imphal airport despite the fact that the full lockdown is on in the state. The chief minister himself said that if there were no lockdown in place in the state, it would have been the grandest of occasions. However, hundreds of people came out along roadsides and greeted Chanu wherever her convoy passed. The chief minister handed over to her a rupees one crore cheque, while education minister Sorokai Bam Rajin handed over a 30 lakh check. Her two childhood coaches were also felicitated on Tuesday. While expressing happiness, Chanu said she never thought she would be greeted in this manner. She said she had been training hard for the past five years, maintaining strict diet and lifestyle. She decided to immediately come back home after winning the silver medal because she has started missing home a lot. After the function at the city convention centre, she was escorted by the chief minister along with the council of ministers to the second Manipur Rifles complex, where her new office has been set up by the state government. She was given the appointment letter of additional superintendent of police at the second MR complex. Chanu said the high position given to her was a surprise. She also said she wants to dedicate the medal to the people of Manipur. In some more news, the Ministry of Home Affairs on Tuesday informed the Lok Sabha that it has issued a guideline to all states and union territories for the installation of CCTV cameras in all police stations. State for Home Affairs Nityanand Rai shared the inputs in Lok Sabha in a written reply mentioning that the Supreme Court, in its order dated December 2 last year, gave detailed direction to states and the Union Territories and Union of India for installation of CCTV cameras in all police stations and offices of central investigation agencies. The minister said that the apex court in its last hearing held on April 6 this year had directed for allocation of budget to the central agencies within one month from the date of order and for implementation of complete order within a period of six months from the date of allocation of budget. Rai further said that the central investigation agencies requested on April 13 this year for the allocation of budget and installation of CCTV cameras in their offices within the time frame given by the apex court. He however mentioned that states and the union territories have already been pleaded in the case for filing status report on the installation of CCTV cameras in police stations directly before the Supreme Court. As police is a state subject, the information regarding the number of police stations have CCTVs is not maintained at the level of central government, clarified the minister, adding that an advisory dated July 8 this year has been issued to state and union territory governments for installation of CCTV cameras in all police stations. It may also be noted that in the light of the order dated December 2 during the previous year of the Supreme Court, the state governments had also been advised to include their requirement of installing CCTV cameras in each and every police station in their proposals for the year 2021 to 2022. After the violent clash between Assam and Mizoram over a border dispute, the Congress party has constituted a seven-member committee to assess the situation on the ground. The committee has been asked to submit the report of the matter to Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi. A seven-member committee is to be formed with immediate effect with the following members to visit Kachar and any other area to assess the Assam-Mizoram border dispute on the ground and the ensuing violence that has caused the lives of police personnel amongst others reads the All India Congress Committee's notification. A detailed report of the same shall be submitted to the party thereafter it read. This comes after six Assam police personnel died in an exchange of fire with their Mizoram counterparts, said Assam BJP MLA Kaushik Rai on Monday. Rai, who visited the Silchar Medical College where the injured are admitted, said that at least 40 people were injured, including three to four civilians. 40 people injured, including three to four civilians, and as per doctors, six policemen have died, the BJP MLA said. The chief minister has directed State Minister Piyush Hazarika to visit the border area, said the BJP MLA. However, according to Assam Minister Parimal Suklabaidia, about 80 people were injured in the firing from the Mizoram side. Six Assam police personnel have died and around 80 people have been injured in the firing, Suklabaidia said. There was no firing from our side, he claimed. 
Firing from the Mizoram side was similar to that by the British at Jalainwala Bagh, said Sukla Baidia. The London High Court declared fugitive Indian businessman Vijay Malia bankrupt on July 26 in a major victory for Indian banks. A group of Indian banks led by the State Bank of India to seek a worldwide freezing order to seize Vijay Malia's Indian assets in order to recover debt owed by his now defunct Kingfisher Airlines. At 1542, Dr. Malia is adjudicated bankrupt. Chief Insolvencies and Company Court Judge Michael Briggs said in his ruling during a virtual hearing of the Chancery Division of the High Court in London. The Indian banks, represented by the law firm TLT LLP and barristers Marcia Shekhar Dimian, had argued for the bankruptcy order to be granted in favour of the Indian banks. Malia reportedly attempted to appeal the High Court decision but was denied permission to do so. An application by a lender consortium led by the SBI to alter the bankruptcy case in favour of surrendering the security over Malia's assets in India was upheld by a UK court earlier this year in May. Meanwhile, the 65-year-old businessman remains in the UK on bail pending the resolution of a secret court matter believed to be related to an asylum application in connection with unrelated extradition proceedings. The police custody of Raj Kundra, businessman and husband of Bollywood actor Shilva Shetty and his IT head Ryan Thorpe arrested in connection with an alleged pornography case will end today. A magistrate's court in Mumbai on July 23 extended their police custody till Tuesday. The police earlier told the court that the 45-year-old businessman was gaining financially from the illegal activity of making and selling pornographic material, news agency PTI reported. The police claimed that they have seized Kundra's mobile phone and its contents need to be scrutinized and also his business dealings and transactions have to be looked into. This is why transactions between Raj Kundra's Yes Bank account and United Bank of Africa account need to be investigated, Mumbai police told the court according to news agency ANI. On July 20, the Mumbai police said that they have arrested Kundra and 10 others for their alleged involvement in the creation of porn films and publishing them through mobile apps. Mumbai Police Commissioner Hemant Nagrale said in a statement that Kundra appears to be the key conspirator. We have sufficient evidence regarding this, Nagrale said. Maharashtra's Anti-Corruption Bureau said on Thursday that it has received four emails alleging that Kundra even bribed Mumbai police officials with 25 lakh to avoid arrest. Kundra had a tie-up with a London-based company involved in streaming pornographic content through Hot Shots, a mobile app. Joint Commissioner of Police Crime Milin Bharambe said. The case was registered with Mumbai Police's crime branch in February this year about the creation of pornographic films and the use of apps. The Ministry of Home Affairs informed Parliament on Tuesday that it has sought six more months to frame rules for the Citizenship Amendment Act or the CAA. The Ministry of Home Affairs said it has asked committees on subordinate legislation in both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha time till January 9, 2022. Replying to a question posed by Congress MP Gaurav Gogoi, Minister of State for Home Affairs Nityanand Rai said that the CAA has been notified on December 12, 2019 and has come into force from January 10, 2020. The committees on subordinate legislation, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, have been requested to grant further extension of time up to January 9, 2022 to frame the rules under the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019. The CAA allows persecuted minorities belonging to the Hindu, Sikh, Jain, Buddhist, Parsi and Christian communities from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan to avail Indian citizenship. People belonging to these communities who arrived in India till December 31st, 2014 due to religious persecution in these three countries will not be treated as illegal immigrants but will be provided with Indian citizenship according to the provision of the Act. The Supreme Court on Tuesday made it clear that it cannot take an elitist view and ban begging while stressing that needing to take to the streets to egg out a living is a socio-economic problem. A bench of Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and Justice M.R. Shah issued notice to the centre and Delhi government on a petition seeking vaccination and rehabilitation of homeless, beggars and vagabonds amid COVID-19 pandemic across India. The reason why people are required to take 
to the streets to beg is to eke out an elementary livelihood in the absence of education and employment, the court said. It's a social economic problem and cannot be remedied in this way, said the bench while saying that it cannot pass an order to remove beggars from the streets, public places and traffic junctions. Why do people beg on the street, the bench asked. It's a function of poverty, it stated. As the Supreme Court, it will not take an elitist view and it has no choice. Nobody wants to beg, just as Chandrachur told senior advocate Chinmoy Sharma appearing for the petitioner. The court was hearing a public interest litigation filed by advocate Kush Kalra seeking to restrain beggars, vagabonds or those who are homeless from begging at traffic junctions in markets and public places to avoid the spread of COVID-19 pandemic across India and to rehabilitate them. This is a wider issue of social welfare policy from the government and the court can't say keep them away from our eyes, the apex court said. The top court asked the centre and Delhi government to apprise it about steps that are being taken to deal with this human problem and posted the matter for hearing after two weeks. The top court opined that the issue is a socio-economic problem and requires urgent attention of the centre and Delhi government regarding vaccination of beggars and homeless in the national capital. The immediate issue is to ensure vaccination of the persons and that the facilities for a pandemic are available, the court stated. It has directed the Union of India and GNCT Delhi to file a response on how to deal with this human situation. The Solicitor General can assist the court, the apex court stated in the order. The court during the hearing said that beggars, vagabonds, homeless are entitled to medical facilities as others in relation to COVID-19. A stampede-like situation took place at the Mahakaleshwar Temple in Ujjain, Madhya Pradesh on Monday causing injuries to many including women and children. The heavy crowding led to flouting of several coronavirus-related norms, guidelines, including maintaining distance and wearing masks. The situation worsened and security officials struggle with crowd management due to visits by heavyweight citizens, including Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan and BJP leader Uma Bharti. This was the first Monday of the Hindu month of Shravan, considered auspicious by a large number of Hindus who visit temples of Lord Shiva to offer their prayers. The stampede was reportedly witnessed at gate number 4 of the temple, one of the 12 Jyotir Lingas of Lord Shiva. At a point, the security personnel were overpowered following which people rushed in. Soon after, many of the devotees lost their balance and others fell on them. Around 8.30 a.m., a large number of people tried to enter for darshan and in the process broke the barricade at gate number 4 of the temple complex. After the barricade broke, several people tried to run towards the main deity, but thankfully, there was no untoward incident, the temple's assistant administrator, Mulchan Junwal, said. As many as 3,500 devotees have been granted permission to visit the temple between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., with 500 people allowed to enter the premises in two hours. Ujjain District Collector Ashish Singh said that the situation would be normal next Monday. COVID protocol call cannot be followed in the kind of free for all we had today this was an exception but we will revise the plan for next monday and ensure social distancing singh was quoted as saying in a report about 60 to 80 tourists have been stranded in two villages of himachal pradesh's kinnor district after multiple landslides on july 25th blocked roads a senior official said on tuesday these tourists are stranded at chitkul and rakshak the last villages of the Babsa Valley, as the Sangla Chitkul Road has been closed for traffic after the landslides, Kino Deputy, Deputy Commissioner Abit Hussain Sadiq said. The district administration is facing difficulty in clearing the heavy boulders from the road. The owners of apple orchards are objecting to the boulders being dumped near their orchards located down the road. He said that he hoped the road would be open for traffic by Tuesday evening. Nine tourists were killed on Sunday after heavy boulders fell on their tempo traveller near Basteri in Kinnor. The government would brazen out the allegations of snooping until it is known who the Indian client of Israeli firm NSO Group's Pegasus spyware was and that name would be revealed soon, senior Congress leader P. Chidambaram said on Tuesday. Minister said that based on investigations by an international group of journalists, news portal The Wire has reported that there was an Indian client of the NSO group. 
The previous week, an international media consortium reported that over 300 verified mobile phone numbers, including those of two ministers, over 40 journalists, three opposition leaders, besides scores of business persons and activists in India, could have been targeted for hacking through the Pegasus spyware of the NSO group. The government has been denying all opposition allegations in the matter. Who was the Indian client, Chidambaram said? Was it the government of India and was it an agency of the government? And was it a private entity, Chidambaram asked in a tweet. Chidambaram said he is certain the client's name will be revealed soon. Until then, the government may brazen out the allegations of snooping, he said. COVID vaccines for children are likely. In a matter of days, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was told this morning at a meeting of BJP MPs at Parliament. Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia said that the meeting of the BJP's parliamentary party that the government would likely start vaccinating children next month, according to sources. According to experts, this will be a giant step in breaking the chain of transmission and also reopening schools across the country amid warnings of a possible third wave of COVID. Earlier this month, Dr. N.K. Arora, who heads the National Expert Group on Vaccines, had told NDTV that vaccination for children will start by September with the Zydus vaccine for 12 to 18-year-olds. Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine and Zydus Kadila's candidates are testing vaccines for children. The results of the co-vaccine trials are expected by September, AIMS chief Randeep Guleria has said. That's all for the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.